The Farrowella or twig catfish is an interesting and unique fish from shallow, swift flowing streams in South America. So they're going to appreciate an aquarium that mimics their home environment. They'll get about six inches in the home aquarium, so they'll need a tank of at least 120 litres and upwards. pH around a neutral mark with temperatures between about 24 and 26 degrees Celsius. Hardness is not really an issue for them, but they need clean water and stable conditions. They are not going to appreciate fluctuations. In fact, the best way to introduce them to a tank is going to be the drip acclimation method. That will allow them to slowly adjust to the new water conditions, and you're going to want to set them up in an established aquarium. They are algae and biofilm grazers. They'll chow down on the old flux, so they need a tank that has been set up for a while. They will enjoy some of your softer green algaes and diatom algaes, and they tend to graze constantly. That is why an environment where these food sources have been able to cultivate is kind of ideal, but they're omnivorous and they'll accept a great range of foods. They'll take your, your flake occasionally, but they're going to prefer things like Rapashi, your morning wood is a good one. Canned green beans or French cut beans, green beans, I call them here. Some of your algae wafers, they'll like uh, cucumber and courgette. Kale sometimes, mostly a dark green veg in fact. But they'll also take brine shrimp and bloodworm. They are going to much prefer a planted tank where you have lots of wood. Partly because they can graze on the biofilm, but also, if you look at the fish itself, it's not a fish that is designed to be boisterous or even to evade attack. It's going to rely on blending into the environment and kind of camouflaging itself away from attention. That can present difficulties within itself when planning a tank for these guys, because you're going to need enough light to grow your plants, but they don't enjoy highlight areas. You're going to need to provide plenty of hiding spots and shaded areas where this fish can rest and feel comfortable. They will frequently nestle amongst stem plants which can make them hard to spot and locate sometimes. But also due to them grazing on the biofilm within the plants or on the plant sorry it can mean that they kind of are a bit harsh on the types of broad leaf plants like Amazon swords. Uh, they can damage them in an effort to feed. Their mouth structure is like some plecos, whereby they attach to the surface and then rasp away, getting the nutrition and the food they need. However, that can be a little bit hard on the plants. With all these factors taken into account, you might consider it at least an intermediate fish to keep. I wouldn't say it's a beginner fish by any manner or means. And because they're relatively rare in the hobby at the moment, they are quite expensive too at this time. I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I think the price tag actually reflects the amount of respect this, sh this fish deserves and requires in order to keep it successfully. In terms of tank mates, I think you're looking for fish that enjoy similar water parameters. So other South American fish from the area that are going to leave it alone so top to mid dwellers like some of your smaller tetra possibly corridoras although they might be a wee bit too active and bother your farrowella i feel like plecos could be an issue because males can tend to be territorial as can male twi twi catfish so maybe not the greatest mix in fact a species only tank is probably ideal for these guys. We're not wanting anything that's too active, too boisterous on the lower level of the tank and sometimes on the side of the glass or anything that's going to outcompete it for food. I would be prepared to put my neck out and say it is one of the very few fish that is shrimp safe. They don't seem interested in the fish in the shrimp at all. And at times they will actually stand aside and allow the shrimp to gobble up the food and wait their turn. That said, they are an armoured fish. So 
So they have some protection against inquisitive neighbours. However, their fins are also quite delicate. So if a fish was trying to pay them too much attention, there is a risk of them getting injured. And of course, that could lead to infection, stress, and genuinely a bad time for the whole tank, really. Their response to too much attention, as indeed to moving across the tank in general, is to shoot off in a direction and slowly settle onto a spot, like a paper aeroplane being thrown across a room and then drifting gently to the ground. Sometimes they manage to land on top of the food they're aiming for, sometimes they miss it completely, seemingly not knowing it's right there, even though it's like less than an inch from their face. This is not an active fish. If you're looking for an aquarium with lots going on all the time, then this is possibly not the fish for you. But if you're looking for something distinctive, interesting, and a little bit different, then this might be a nice option. As I said before, it takes a little bit of skill to keep these fish successfully. But if you're prepared to do that and able to do that, I think it's a very nice option.